Hey folks, stay tuned for another edition for Dude in the Kitchen. That's right, my series. Uh, I'm gonna be, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and make a video on canning peaches. And I tried to simplify the process a little bit easier. Stay tuned and I'll show you what I did. Welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. This is the series Dude in the Kitchen. I changed it up. It used to be called uh, Homestead Kitchen. Anyway, uh, I figured it's kind of more uh, self-explanatory. I'm a dude. This is my wife's kitchen, and I'm in it. So, let me get this on, and we'll get this ball rolling. I'm going to be canning peaches today. And uh, I got some peaches from Harry and David Country Store down in Medford, Oregon. Medford, Oregon is Harry and David's headquarters. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So each August, on every weekend throughout August, Harry and David hosts what they call their Peach Palooza. Well, it means they sell a lot of peaches. So people come from far and wide to Harry and David. I'm one of them. And this is my third year for uh, Peach Palooza canning peaches. Uh, last year was a fail. I explained it in a previous video, the video because I got my peaches. Forest fire broke out behind the homestead. We evacuated. By the time I got back, the peaches were, well, not cannibal. They were more fertilizer than anything else. So let me get my canner and we'll get started. Start by washing this out and filling it with water. And then we'll put it on the stove and turn the heat on and get the water to boiling. Once I have the water, while well, I'm waiting for the water to boil, I'm gonna go ahead and wash my peaches and then set them aside and get them ready. And then while I'm still waiting for the water to boil because I'm at our altitude, 2,000 feet, remember that, that comes up later in the show. I'm going to get my cooler ready, my ice chest, because I'm going to put some ice in there, a big bag of ice with some water, and create an ice bath. So I'm going to boil my peaches for 20 seconds. Then once the 20 seconds is up, I'm going to go ahead and ladle it out of the pot. We're going to dump them right into the ice bath. This will stop the cooking process and cool them down rapidly. And uh, in, the, in the meantime, we'll let the water return to a boil and we'll add these peaches to these pots I have set on the side. Containers, uh, bowls, anything you want to use to contain the peaches. So we process the next bag of peaches and keep doing that until all the peaches are boiled for 20 seconds and then ice bath and then put in the bowls. Now, once I have the uh, peaches uh, set aside and they're all together, I'm ready for the next step. We're just going to take the skins off of them. This is an easy process. All you have to do is this. See how easy the skin just peels right off of these suckers? I mean, so easy. Then I set them in another pot, and then we go on to the next process once all the skins are removed. I'm going to take a pair of knife, and I'm going to start cutting them into quarters. I like my peaches in quarters, I don't like them in halves, and slices are fine, uh, but I think quarters, well, I'll be honest with you, I'm a little bit lazy today because I had a lot going on, and uh, quarters is quicker. That's, that's it for me. Once I got the peaches all skinned and quartered them, and then um, I'm going to go ahead and take, you know, you quarter them to remove the pits. 
uh, this is the pit and then this is the pit open and this is what the seed looks like inside of a peach well I'm just gonna eat the seeds look just like a uh, uh, an almond how about that anyway they're edible but not don't eat too many of them limit yourself to maybe five same way with apricot seeds don't eat more than that because there is an element in there uh, you don't want to ingest too much of but that element if you do get it in you it dissipates out of the body over a period of time I've got a whole nother story on that element and what it does yeah it's good it's really beneficial but don't overdo it anyway we're gonna put it in a ziploc bag we're gonna set it in the refrigerator and we're gonna simulate winter for these seeds yep it's going in the refrigerator for a hundred days And after 100 days, we'll go ahead and pull the seeds out of the refrigerator and uh, plant them. It'll help uh, yeah, reset the internal mechanism in the seeds for uh, germinating in the springtime. So that's what we're going to do, simulate winter. That'll be a whole other video because i got another uh, set of seeds in here. I'm going to be doing another video on them next week. No, this week, maybe tomorrow. Yeah, I could do that tomorrow. Anyway, let's get back to peaches. Uh, once I got them pitted and quartered, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set them aside and then uh, change my water in the water bath and I'm going to add some vinegar. What the vinegar does is that if you have a little bit of hard water, uh, minerals in your water, you know, what the vinegar does is it keeps the uh, minerals from attaching to the jar. Make sure jars come out nice and clean once you've uh, canned you know, the process. Anyway, we're going to let that come to a boil and then we're going to sterilize all of my jars. Now this step isn't really necessary, uh, not in today's thing because the new guidelines are you don't need to sterilize your jars because the canning process actually sterilizes the jars and the product inside the jars. So that's a step you don't need to do. But I'm playing it on the safe side and I'm going to sterilize these jars because they have been sitting for a whole year out. And I'll make sure that there's nothing I'm introducing to them that can't be killed. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and fill the jars with, uh, I'm going to pack the peaches down as much as possible, leaving a one inch head space for the peaches. Now I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to make my syrup concoction. We're deciding on this homestead a light syrup recipe. Light syrup is six cups of water, two cups of sugar. Bring that to a boil. What? In the microwave? And then once it's boiled, you just uh, start adding your syrup to the tops of the jar, you know, to your jar content using your uh, funnel. And then make sure you leave a half inch headspace in your jars. I like to take my rings and I like to sterilize the rings also. You don't need to because they're on the outside of the jar. I don't know what's been crawling on the rings while they've been sitting in storage, but we're going to play it safe, like I said, with the jars. The lids, I just like to soak them in hot water for a few minutes just to get them uh, ready and make sure there's no cooties left on them from the factory. Okay, now after I have completed packing the peaches into the jars, leaving a one inch headspace, then pouring my syrup in there, and y'all all the time using a funnel and then uh, making sure I have a half inch head space for the syrup. Now, I wipe the edges and rims of the jars with a wet paper towel to make sure there's no debris on those rims. You don't want any debris on the rims because that might compromise a seal from the lids that we're now going to pull out the, uh, the hot water bath with my little magnetic wand. Not a magic wand, a magnet wand, and we're going to carefully set them on each jar opening
And then we're going to pull out the rings and tighten those down to the first level of resistance when you tighten the ring. When it just starts to resist, just, just pass that just a tiny bit and then you're ready. Use your jar lifter and we're going to carefully load this canner. This canner I picked up for $21 at Walmart and it comes with a rack, a jar rack. This jar rack and canner will hold eight of these little jars. So we're going to go ahead and water bath can them. I want to add, at my altitude here at Pine Meadows Hobby Farm, we are at 2,000 feet. So therefore, I looked for this jar size for this altitude, and the required canning time is 30 minutes. Please check the canning time for your locale, for your altitude. It's shorter canning time for lower altitudes, uh, longer canning times for higher altitudes. Also, you want to add canning time for if you're going to can larger jars. I'm doing these small jars because it's just me and my wife are going to be eating these peaches. You know, we'll share them with my mother-in-law. And because um, she lives here too. And my peaches, yeah, they're delicious. And I can make peach pie with them in the future. We'll see. Yes. So, while we're waiting for the canning process, 30 minutes. I'll just go ahead and sit down at the computer and process the video that I've uh, filmed already. And then you guys probably already seen that one by the time I upload this one. I think it was the one on uh, the arrival of the gravel. Yeah, that was a busy day. I moved four loads of gravel in one day with that tractor. Okay, now, once the 30 minutes is up, go ahead and use the jar lifter and remove the cans and put them on a safe surface that is uh, covered. You don't want to put them directly on a cold countertop because the cold or the hot could crack your jar. So I'm just laying them out on these paper towels. I've never lost a jar yet on these. You can use a paper bag. You can use your favorite product that they use for setting uh, jars on. Even a dish towel work or a bath towel. It depends on what you have, but use an insulator between your cold surface and your hot jar and it works for me then you stand back and put the next set of jars in the canner set the timer for 30 minutes and start listening to the music of your jars pop 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 yep once you hear that pop that means you've got a really good seal on that and those jars those peaches I've read if you store them in a cool dry place they will last for years. Yes, they will. I should add that with the uh, skinning process, this process also works with tomatoes and plums and any soft skin fruit. And technically, uh, I think a tomato is classified as a fruit, so there you go. I'll be canning my tomatoes because I got a load of tomatoes coming through in the garden. I'm having a really successful crop of tomatoes this year. So now that the canning process is all finished, I'm just going to let the can sit and dry while well, cool. Uh, I'll let them cool and then I'll go ahead and stack them over here on the counter and make a nice display to show you guys the video of my success of canning peaches. I got 40 jars from this, uh, these five bags. I'm very pleased with myself. Now we've got peaches. This will last us for the whole year, maybe a little bit beyond. Well, after I clean this up, I'm just going to go ahead and put it away. Kitchen's cleaned up, make the wife happy. And uh, that concludes this episode on Dude in the Kitchen canning peaches. Please stay tuned to more videos. You could do that by subscribing and clicking that bell icon that alerts you to new videos as I do produce them and upload them. Also, uh, please leave a comment, hit that share button, sharing my videos on your social media platforms really helps out the channel a lot. Another thing you can do is uh, give me a thumbs up, like the channel, like the show, and uh, that helps with the algorithms with uh, YouTube. Hey, um, you know what? It's the season. Homesteaders are really busy, so I've got a lot more content coming to you guys. Uh, 
I put the next three days off work, so I'll be cranking them out. Stay tuned. We'll see you guys later. Please be safe. And above all, please be kind. Bye-bye.